It's so hard figuring out how to price your art, right? And nobody ever has a clear answer for it. That's why I made this video series for you here. It's gonna teach you everything that you do and do not wanna do, friend. And first off, I gotta tell you why your cheap art is a waste of time. Now, I wanna start this off with a big major bomb to drop on you, which is that if you are offering your art services for a ridiculously low rate, and I'm talking like single digit or just starting to creep into double digits there, you actually don't want money. What you want is validation. And nobody else really ever speaks about this. I've never heard another artist talk about it. And that's why I need to speak up to you about it today because really it has nothing at all to do with the money. And this, by the way, it's not wrong. It's totally natural to want to have somebody out there, whether it be a family member or a friend or hey, some stranger on the internet that wants to toss you a few dollars because really what you're wanting is nothing to do with finances and it's everything to want to do with somebody that validates your self-worth as an artist, that validates your skills. Speaking of worth, instead, lowballing yourself actually leads to this big concern. Are you coming off desperate? Do you just appear like you just need something and somebody and whatever bit and scrap of money there is out there for you to produce artwork? It's because of this concern that a lot of groups have started to do away with the old emergency commissions. Have you ever seen these things before? It's not going to do anything for you financially to do five, seven, 10, $20 commissions, $30 commissions even. It's not gonna do anything for you. In fact, you're gonna find a whole slew of new problems that are gonna come your way. They're going to intensify what you're feeling. But because of the fact that you're coming off desperate, people are gonna pick up on that. People People are predators out there, y'all. And you coming off like you will pour your heart and soul into an artwork for pennies is going to invite somebody to take advantage of you. This is because clients at these low rates, they're just gonna view you as cheap labor and they're going to treat you as such. Like you're expendable, like you don't matter and you definitely deserve better than that. And the reason why this happens also is because of this issue. These efforts aren't worth your time literally doing commissions, doing any type of artwork for this low of a price, it's literally not worth your time and investment into it. So let's take a look at it like this. Over here in the United States, minimum wage, depending on where you live, is somewhere between 11 and $14 an hour, right? So if you were to go ahead and take, let's say a 15 or $20 commission, right? That's pretty much one hour of work at McDonald's. So therefore, why in the world would you invest four to 10 hours into an artwork. And yeah, sometimes I've even heard people say, oh, well, it only takes me an hour. If it only takes you an hour to produce a really high quality artwork, friend, I'm just gonna call you out on this. I think that maybe you can do better. So if you would be better off financially going to work at McDonald's than taking a $15 commission, right? Why throw your time and your life away for that? It just doesn't make sense. And this is going to be one of the main reasons why you will not sustain and you will burn out from art. Instead of forcing yourself into this labor camp that's not paying you anything at all, the problem with it is because you're also not considering this. One of the major things that you need to recognize and respect is the sacrifice you have made to get to where you currently are in your art level. And that is something that I really need you to deeply consider so that you can really change your mind and you can change your art pricing big time here. What I really want you to get out of is this mindset of your hourly rate and get out of this mindset of you working at a minimum wage job, okay? And this is a really big problem I see with a lot of artists because a lot of artists are looking for how they can produce the best value or hook the client just so that they can get something rather than nothing. But this is a really broken mindset, my friend, and here's how I wanna try and explain it to you. So my first job I ever had, I worked at McDonald's. I had to train for one day to do that job. Then I worked at Lowe's Home Improvement and I had to train for one week before I could hit the sales floor and start to sell products and help people. How long have you been learning how to produce art? Here's another really big thing to consider. Only 1% of the entire world's population are artists. Y'all, that should empower you. Respect that sacrifice that you have made into building your skills. It's really unique. You have expertise and therefore, because you are in a niche expertise area, you deserve and you demand high prices. Have you really sat down and considered how rare and awesome your skills are? You need to consider that and you need to charge them for it. I also bet big time you have not considered this, my friends. 
Does working for 20 or $30 for 10 hours, does that just summon like superhuman efforts and you just want to pour your heart and soul into whatever that thing is that you're working on right there? Probably not, right? Let me give you another example. Let's say that you lost $5. How upset would you be over it? Let's say that you lost $10. You'd probably be like, oh, that sucks, man. But no, I'll get over it, okay? And then let's say that you lost $20. You'd be like, oh, that's so stupid. But whatever, it is what it is. Now imagine you lost a hundred bucks. You'd be pissed at yourself, right? Let's say you lost $500. You'd be royally pissed at yourself, right? Here's my big point I wanna make for you. When you are taking low ball artwork, you never can put in your best efforts because your motivation is at such a low level. You know, even if you don't do that artwork, you're gonna be okay with it. And that's also why artists that lowball themselves and come in at super cheap rates, they're not helping themselves and they're not serving others. So therefore, why try to be in it? It just doesn't make sense. And you gotta be honest with yourself, you're just not going to try to produce the best efforts because you're not feeling respected for it. This is why I'm a really strong advocate for higher pricing on your part, because you are able to bring your best when you're treated like your best. Now, ignoring this reality, brings about this popular lie. Have you ever heard someone say that their art is a gift and therefore they feel awkward or weird or they don't feel like they need to charge people because it's such a tremendous blessing to be able to produce art like they can? Okay, so I really need to blow this all apart so let me drop this bomb on you. Now, let's say that they are able to be the Mother Teresa of the art world, okay? They're going to develop feelings of resentment, resentment towards art making, resentment towards the client, resentment towards the project. And therefore, again, they're going to not be able to bring their best because they're not being respected. It's a vain validation point to try and tell yourself that because you're able to produce this, you therefore don't have to charge or you're not allowed to charge what you really want to. No, my friend, no. You you can charge and you should charge what you deserve, not what somebody else thinks or feels. And if you now believe this, or if you already believe this, let me know about it. Let's affirm that down in the comments. Artists deserve respect, period. Now we haven't talked about this yet, but here's the real reason why you are afraid to charge more. Are you thinking with your own wallet? Are you nervous that no one's gonna pay what you think you deserve and what you really want? Have you ever looked around groups and forums and subreddits and Discord servers and seen what people are charging and think that you have to go ahead and charge that just because people around you maybe told you this is what you should start at, this is what you need to price yourself at? Well, my friend, here's how I want to empower you and really just, just bring it in close for this one here. There are 7 billion people in the world, 7 billion. You don't need 7 billion clients, dude. You need a few maybe every month. That's all you need to do, okay? My friends, I want to let you know that there are tons of people out there in the world that are in a really good, stable financial position. There are lots of people out there with expendable income that want to buy your artwork, that would be excited to because again, they cannot produce it themselves. I want you to just put aside your doubts thinking that, oh, no one's going to pay that. Yeah, maybe there are people that will not pay that, but guess what? There are plenty of people that will pay it. Now, if you ignore all this, here's 100% I guarantee you this is going to happen. I promise you, you will burn out. You will quit art. You will stop producing altogether because all of your efforts are disproportionately focused because you are not getting any respect and there is no payoff. And I mean that very literally, there's no payoff for you. What this is going to also produce is a really nasty internal cycle of questioning yourself because you're gonna question your value and you're gonna question your worth and what you need to put your time and efforts into. And then that's gonna cause you to give up because you're gonna feel and you're going to be reinforced by your bad experiences that you yourself are producing for yourself by lowballing your art to such disrespectfully low numbers. You are going to give up your artwork. Once you hit this rock bottom low, it is ridiculously hard to move past this, to refocus your efforts and to reignite that flame that's honestly been totally put out. So you might be asking around this point, so how do I go ahead and start the right way? Here's what you do. If you are charging less than the McDonald's value meal for your services, if you cannot afford to go out to the Olive Garden by yourself, here's what I want you to do right now, is I want you to go ahead and set a bare minimum 
a bottom floor pricing of $50. And that is for your cheapest artwork, not for your biggest artwork, for your cheapest artwork. Now, at this point, you might be feeling too afraid still. You might be pessimistic saying, oh, Sean, I, I still don't know if anyone's actually gonna pay me that price. Ooh, that, that's a steep price tag because again, you're thinking with your wallet. So. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bless you with permission right now, my friend. You can go ahead and take one cheapo art commission because yes, I recognize that you need that validation. Validation is important, but you don't want to come off desperate. If you've done this before and you're still not getting what you need, then what I am gonna recommend that you do is definitely watch the rest of my playlist on art commissions so that you can refocus and you can learn what you have to do because getting art commissions is not a simple business. But I know a lot of things because I've been doing this a long time and I've seen a lot of people do a lot of the wrong things. So I'm here for you, friend. As you are going through your art commission's journey now, I want you though to remember your worth and I want you to respect your efforts. And if you do this, then you will understand that you cannot undervalue yourself or else other people will not value you either. Now that you understand why that's not gonna help you and your bank account friend, I'm gonna tell you my number one secret sauce pricing tip that allowed me to go from $40 to over $1,000, and it's right here. Now there's a lot of inherent opposition to this, and I'm gonna just go ahead and repeat to you the most popular rhetoric that I hear all the time from clients and from other artists about this. The most common complaint I hear is this one, which is that clients are gonna feel really anxious to reach out to artists, they feel uncomfortable with it, they're also gonna wanna know the pricing ahead of time so that they can budget it and a lot of artists will say that they're more likely to buy when they know their pricing ahead of time so hmm what do you think about all that so this all seems really nice it seems thoughtful it seems very considerate of the client but what do you really think about all that you want to know what i think about that coming from a professional here's what i think so what if you're really concerned about a client potentially not wanting to just reach out to you to send you a DM, to send you an email or contact you however you feel to, then what's the possibility that that client is serious? What's the possibility, more importantly, that they're actually gonna pay you for it? Let me just tell you, all of this is not your problem, my friend. It's just not. The reason why this is so popular right now is because this is total rubbish that's just been perpetuated by cheap clients. Y'all artists, we gotta stop listening to them. Rather than getting hooked on your price first, which is what this cycle initiates, which is wrong by the way. So here's the principle I suggest that you follow. Instead of the client looking at a price and either buying or going away, what they should do first is fall in love with your artwork. What they should do second is fall in love with you. And then very last is to fall in love with your pricing. Now here's how you wanna break out of this poor man's prison. Just do it right now. After you watch this video, my friend, I want you to go back to whatever pricing sheet, commission sheet, card, website, pricing journal, anything. I want you to just rip off the bandaid and I want you to just go ahead and take all of your art pricing down. And I know this is gonna feel uncomfortable. It's gonna feel a little anxious too because you're still gonna see a whole crap load of people online that are doing this really awful practice. Here's how I wanna leverage you and here's how I suggest that you move forward. My main mission of my channel here is to empower artists to create an amazing life doing what they really love. And a big part of this, y'all, is that we have to defy poor practices that are horribly evident that are holding back a lot of artists. And that's just not cool. And to do this, we have to liberate ourselves from these poor practices that are just perpetuated by really cheap clients. We need to empower ourselves and I want to empower you to actually do things that will help you sustain yourself, not only financially, but also your passion so that you will want to continue to make art. So are you not convinced yet? Let's go over the benefits of doing this. The biggest advantage is that you can go ahead and you can increase your pricing as you become more in demand. Y'all, I see so many artists not doing this and I'm just gonna be very blunt about it. You're really shorting yourself a ton of money by doing this. Basically, this is just simple supply and demand. The more that you are being requested, the more that you are being commissioned, the more freelance work you're getting, the more your pricing should go up. But what do you see online? They keep themselves ultra low in price and they just stay there. And y'all, I really need to empower you right now. You are both, as an artist, product and producer. And also I wanna empower you right now, art is a luxury. It's not something that anybody needs to have. So therefore you command a certain price point and you're able to fluctuate a lot more than somebody who works at McDonald's and has to work at an hourly rate. Y'all, you gotta get yourself out of this mindset. Are you not convinced? 
that this is an acceptable practice, let me just ask you, do you put gas into your car? Do you have food? Do you go to a gym? If they can do it, why can't you? Why can't artists price themselves up as they become more in demand? The simple truth is that it's a choice. It's not a necessity. Also, now you're free to do this. So graduated pricing is another key pricing tactic that you should definitely be using as you're gonna be freelancing, as you're gonna be taking art commissions. So basically what this means is that again, because you become more in demand, and if you're splitting your attention amongst multiple projects, you should be pricing yourself up as you get multiple clients. So what does this look like? So you can go 50, 55, 60, 65. If you're a little bit more established, it might look like this. 300, 400, 500, 600. The basic concept here is very, very simple, which is that for the first and second client, charge your normal base rate. For your third client, upcharge. For your fourth client, upcharge from the third client, and so on and so forth. What I see a lot of people not doing is them just going ahead and giving way too many clients the exact same rate, even though the artists themselves, they're suffering because they are having to be pushed and pulled in the different directions. Y'all, you deserve compensation for when you are going to take on a bigger workload. It's just a smart and business savvy thing to do. Now on a similar note, you also have the freedom now without any pricing out there to do this. Let's say you get a request for a project and it sounds hard, charge them more money. Let's say that you got a request and it's something a little bit outside of your wheelhouse and it sounds pretty hard too. Charge them more money. Doesn't that sound awesome? You see, the beauty in doing this is that there's no whining, there's no retort. They can't slap some kind of pricing sheet in your face and say, well, wait a minute, how come you charge this much here, but you're telling me I gotta pay more than what this says right here. And I just wanna reassure you right now, this is not crooked, this is totally fair. It's totally okay for you to do this because this is literally how business works. And artists need to think of themselves like business people in order to get out from under the thumb of cheap clients, y'all. And this is how you are actually gonna make a good sustainable wage for your product and your services and how you are actually going to be encouraged to produce more art and be and feel more valued. Now, in order to really pull this off, y'all, you're gonna have to let go of this. This is how artists are actually going to earn respect and along with that, more money for sure. We need to shut down this cheap, robotic, drive-through experience here where artists are just expecting clients to come to them armed with everything and they're either gonna buy or they're not. We need to make this into a better experience. And I wanna lay this sad truth on you, y'all, Artists are the ones that really started this. So y'all, when we lift the veil on the so-called better user experience that's going to serve the client better, what's actually there, my friend, is insecurity. You're insecure about the fact that somebody is not gonna buy from you, that your time's going to be wasted, that you're going to get your hopes up. Listen, I understand this fear of rejection. I am not preaching to you. I have felt this and I have been there with you on this as well. But I wanna assure you, this is how you actually conduct an art business and grow it. Have you ever thought about how much better life would be if you were actually compensated for your value and for your time and your training you put in? Now, this all sounds totally alien to you. Here's the alternative for how you should operate without a pricing sheet. I'm gonna suggest to you that you actually take a more human experience route for this. So what that means is that instead of somebody hooking onto your price or not, then you want to make sure that you get into a DM with the client. Now to help you out, you can definitely follow my tutorials, my tips and tricks for how to go ahead and get clients to come to you. And nowhere on my channel, nowhere in my philosophy do I think that you should follow complete trash, worthless advice like grow your following. Y'all, this isn't working for anybody except for really big channels. Instead, I want you to focus on actionable tips and that's what I'm all about. And when you're doing that, I want you to go ahead in that DM conversation to actually have a full human interaction with them. I want you to go ahead and get all the details. I want you to extrapolate all that information so that then you can go ahead and get that client excited to work with you and get you excited to work with them. And for you to get a cohesive vision together about what that's gonna be. And then yes, for you to actually get a fair and competitive wage. Y'all, that's all 
it takes. And if you're not sure what this looks like, y'all, I made an entire script for you, and it's gonna be in my video, link down below for you after watching this, and it's all about how to talk to our client. Now that you know all this though, you're probably still hearing people talk about bad advice that keeps artists broke. So beware of these. So if you have never heard this, I really want you to lock onto this, my friend. Just because you live in Asia, just because you live in South America, doesn't matter where in the world you live, your geography is not a determining factor in how you should be charging. Yes, I perfectly understand that, of course, there are certain regions of the world where the American dollar or the Euro actually is more sustainable than if you actually lived in North America or Europe. However, though, there is a global standard that I would encourage you right now to start to raise yourself to because just consider this for a second, my friend. If $20 actually gets you somewhere, what does $100 do? What does $200 do? What does $500 do? Just think about that. Think about how good that would feel to get that instead. As long as you can continue to grow and develop your art skills to match those, then you can definitely get that. It doesn't matter where in the world you live, y'all. It doesn't matter if you live on the North Pole. Start charging more competitively because you are just worth it. Are you doing this? If so, y'all can stop it. It's not doing you any good and neither is this. Hopefully right now you have a great sphere of people around you. You probably have some great friends and family. Maybe they tell you that your artwork is great. Maybe they support you in your efforts. But here's the thing, y'all. Your friends and family are lousy influences for your art pricing. Unless they are artists themselves, typically friends and family members, they have no flipping clue about how this industry works, how to actually get anywhere, how to get traction, how to gain momentum on it. And those are just not positive influences on your art pricing. Just because your mom and dad wouldn't pay hundreds of dollars for artwork doesn't mean that there aren't people in the world that will. Just because your friends are broke as crap and they wouldn't pay that amount doesn't mean that everybody in the world is too. The worst thing that people do is that they tend to think with their own wallet. And your friends and family members, they're great supportive influences, but they are terrible business consultants. So no, my friend, don't listen to them as far as how you should be pricing your artwork. You need to be competitive. And if they think the art is not worthwhile, then you should immediately just cut off their opinions because they're not helping you out. You've no doubt heard about this little new thing called AI art. You should not allow that influence to influence your art pricing because I just want to make this blanket statement. There's never going to be a market for AI art. There's never going to be a job in AI art ever because it literally goes against the dogma of what it stands for. And all this does, friend, is it actually elevates your pricing. So if you're undercutting yourself right now, you need to stop doing it because you're afraid of the AI art influence. When something becomes commodified like AI imagery is right now, its perceived value is greatly lowered. And then conversely, the human element, what is actually skilled labor, friend, is greatly elevated because it becomes unique and special. So no, my friend, just because you see people out there trying to scrape and scrounge for a few bucks, and you might even hear people brag about how they got five or ten, ten dollar commissions, big whoop, by the way, then that should not be a reason why you undercut yourself, y'all. You have earned your amazing skills. You have done great things. You have great ideas and you can do things that AIR cannot. So no, don't let that influence y'all. AIR is a one trick pony and that's rendering. Everything else, it totally sucks at. It can't do details, it can't do specifics, and it can't take direction. These are all things that clients need and want and that only you, a human artist, can do. There are so many amazing younger artists coming out every single year because y'all have grown up with a wealth of resources that people in my age bracket honestly didn't. And then same thing with people older than me too that now want to step into an art career that want to start to work with clients and want to get into art industries that are older. And that's fine too. You can never undercut yourself because of your age. This is a terrible idea. Listen, y'all, I understand the need for validation, some type of proof of concept. Somebody wants to actually purchase your art, right? So here's what you want to do. If you are hell-bent on doing this, get that like first or second commission at that lower price and then boom, start to rock it up because you definitely deserve it. Doesn't matter how old you are, friend. And also, if you could please help more artists see this video so that they can get the wages that they deserve, then definitely make sure that you hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons up over here. Thanks so much.
If you ask around to people who are currently your clients or you're trying to look online and you're putting out their forms, hey, how much should I charge for your artwork? These are typically some of the worst places that you can go because you're typically only gonna get responses from cheap clients. Y'all, this should go without saying, but people that won't actually buy artwork for competitive rates are the worst people that you can possibly go to because they're gonna say that your artwork is worth next to nothing, it should be free. They might even tell you that you should only do it for free because art is a gift and it should be spread throughout the world for nothing. This is total garbage and nonsense, y'all. So definitely don't let this get you down. Don't listen to cheap clients. If you have cheap clients right now and you wanna start to upcharge yourself, listen, y'all, you can absolutely do it. Even if they're not going to be your client from now on, it's worth it for you to lose that cheap client in favor of you gaining more clients that actually respect you in your artistry. Wouldn't that feel so much better than what you're currently getting? If you go ahead and you look online, what you're not going to find are professionals. You're not going to find competitive rates. You're not going to find people that respect themselves as artists. What you will find, in fact, is just a whole lot of artists undercutting themselves, not respecting themselves. And I promise you this, within one to two years, you will never see them posting their art online again. Why? Because they burnt out, because they undercharged themselves. The market, quote unquote, is one of the worst places for you to go to get influence as far as how you should be pricing it. You always want to price yourself respectively even if you're just starting out like i said before you could go ahead and take a cheapo and then start to crank up those rates to what you deserve if, even sometimes if you go around and you ask other artists how much they're charging for it you might get some really lousy answers for it if anything you should probably double whatever they say sometimes that's what i find so no don't look online, see what everybody is pricing, and then go ahead and structure your pricing after this because you got a lot of non-professionals that don't respect themselves and don't understand their own values. This would be a terrible, terrible mistake from you. Growing up in the world economy with what it is right now, you've no doubt thought about pricing yourself out at some type of hourly rate, right? And that's just because of the influence of you going through school and going through social structures that make you think that you have to price yourself like you are a Walmart employee. No disrespect to them, of course, everyone's gotta work and pay the bills and put food on the table and all that. But listen, y'all, art is nothing like this. You cannot look at yourself as a product where you only get paid per hour. Now, it definitely feels nice once you go ahead and you crank your rates up to the point where you're getting like 30 to $50 an hour when you can say, oh, well, I charge $500 for an artwork and it only took me six hours to do. That's great. And that's something that you should definitely aspire to. However, though, you need to think of your pricing as basically a value of how much you value yourself. That's a critical component that most people don't think about when they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna start to work with clients, when they're gonna put themselves out there, when they want to grow their business, they're gonna think of needing to quantify how much time they're taking. Y'all, it doesn't matter. It's all about the quality. It's quality of the interactions that you make. It's the quality of the experience you provide for your customer. And most importantly, yes, it is the quality of your artwork. So naturally, as your quality improves of all three of those factors, then your pricing includes. It's just a blanket pricing. Y'all. You don't need to break it down like you work at McDonald's. Don't do this, friends. Are you just starting out on your art commissions journey? Are you just now thinking that you want to grow an art business? Is this a great side hustle? Or are you trying to full-time this thing right now? Listen, y'all, it doesn't matter how many commissions you've done. It doesn't matter how many clients you've worked with. It does not matter how many professional artworks you have done for a business or for a private client. You deserve the same rates. You deserve competitive rates because what you do is freaking awesome. It's great. It's amazing. And if you are shortchanging yourself from that, then you are also undervaluing yourself. You cannot do this, my friend. I've seen so many people that are new on the scene really undercharge themselves simply because they're intimidated because they feel insecure about all the other artists. You might even start to think that the market is oversaturated, which is total nonsense because really you're just afraid of rejection and you can't let that be the guiding influence in your life if you allow yourself to think in a scarcity mindset where you think that there's less to go around when you think that there's not enough people not enough clients out there you are doomed for failure and burnout you're also doomed to disrespectful pricing practices and i don't want that for you because you absolutely deserve so much better than that
And I hope you feel that way too, because it took you a long time to get to your current skill level. So definitely don't forget about that. And don't think that just because you're new on the scene, you have to undercharge yourself because it's not right. Now, one of the hardest reasons that it's really difficult for artists to actually price themselves higher is because you're struggling with this. When you are going to put out your price tag, okay, whatever that is for however much it is, it is a direct reflection of how much you value yourself. And we like to put that externally on everybody else, but honestly, that's where it all has to start because I just want to be very honest with you, friend. People are going to mirror whatever you value yourself at. You can't allow yourself to be in a toxic relationship with your artwork. Y'all, what this really comes down to is your confidence in approaching your artwork and in your pricing, which I want to help you with. Because one thing that nobody talks about is that you're never going to achieve a sustainable level with your art ever in your life if you're always going to be afraid to ask for it. Now, if you've just started out, or if you're wanting to start out, or if you're already in the thick of it, you're gonna obviously do some research. And here's what your research is gonna turn up. The vast majority of people that are posting online, trying to get clients, they have abysmal pricing. Like, y'all, I'm talking about less than minimum wage. Now I've been here, so I know what y'all are thinking. Well, I gotta get myself out there. I gotta get a name for myself. I have to just get some experience. But some of y'all stayed there. Some of y'all just camped out and decided to stay in that price range. And you're not moving. You've been stagnant for a while, haven't you? And if you're there right now, listen, I understand. You gotta get one or two and then you gotta move on because here's what's gonna happen, y'all. First is that you're gonna undervalue yourself. Then you're gonna burn out. And it's gonna happen, y'all. I've seen it happen for years and I don't want that to be you, friends. You're gonna find, honestly, that 90% of artists are undercharging themselves. And I really wanna teach you how to get out of that practice because it's just not good for you. Let me ask y'all a hard question now. What makes somebody in one part of the world charge more than somebody in another part of the world? What makes somebody look at your artwork and be able to immediately derive where you live and therefore what the value of that artwork is? The answer is you. Because literally nobody in the world can look at your portfolio and say, oh, well, I see you You live over there. I'm only going to pay you this much. That doesn't happen, y'all. So the issue here is that you become geolocked. Y'all, I want to encourage you right now, be a part of the global market. Y'all, there are 8 billion people on planet Earth. You don't need 8 billion clients. You probably only need a few a month, right? But if you are allowing your current price point to be dictated by your country's economics, then you are missing out on loads of opportunities. And here's another big thing. What if you got yourself out of your current circumstances into a better place because you participated in this? Wouldn't that be life-changing for you? Because you can do it. And that's why I'm going to teach you how. Can I get personal with you now? Let me ask you this. What are the opinions of your family, your parents, your friends, your coworkers about your potential for art making? Do they tell you that you're never gonna be able to achieve your potential? Do they tell you that you're never gonna be able to sustain yourself or have a family or move out of your parents' basement or anything like that? Their comments and their attitudes really pollute your confidence. And the one thing I wanna ask you in order to help jolt you from this mindset is this, were they artists? Because to be honest with y'all, if they weren't artists, who cares what they think? Your mom that's a realtor, who cares? She doesn't know anything about art. Your dad that's a doctor, who cares? He doesn't know anything about the creative fields either. Your friends that aren't even interested in anything that they're passionate about, they're just going for some lame job that they don't even like because their dad told them to go be an accountant because it would make good money. Who cares what they think, y'all? You don't take advice from uncredible sources. Y'all, just to be real and honest with you, would you take health advice from somebody who is in terrible health? No. So why would you take entrepreneurial advice from somebody that's not even in a creative field? But it happens, doesn't it? and you can't let that happen. So let's say you're with me so far, and the next time you talk to a client and you deliver the price that you actually want, and what do they say? Ah, sorry, that's out of my budget. Let me just ask you this. Whose problem is that really? If you're asking for what you believe that you deserve, 
then that's not your problem, it's their problem. So stop thinking about it like it's you. If you talk to somebody and you go through the systems that I teach you how to do and they don't actually buy from you, again, that's not your problem. You can't control it. But here's the problem, y'all. A lot of you watching this right now, you're thinking with your own wallet. You're thinking, well, I would never pay $500 for our work. And I'm just gonna be real honest, neither would I. But I've been paid more than $500 for our work for quite a number of years. But the way that you get there, friend, is that you have to not be afraid to ask for what you want. Because if you don't ever ask for what you actually want, friend, guess what? The answer is always going to be no. And just to be real honest with you, no client's ever going to overpay you. Like if you're asking like $30 for your artwork, at no point is anyone going to be like, whoa, hold on, Sean. $30? No way, bro. Here is $2,000. I just love it. I think you're awesome, and I, I really believe that you're worth more than that. That is never going to happen, man. People will pay what they're asked for based on the perceived value of what they believe it to be. See how that works? You are afraid of what their reaction is going to be to that. You're really letting their opinion pollute yours. Is that really worth it? Can you control that? I don't think so. Now let's go over everything that you can do starting boom right now in order to start to level up your pricing and give you some real respectable returns. And I love giving y'all actionable advice. And if you appreciate that, please don't forget to give me that like and subscribe right there so that you get more content like this and that this gets pushed out to more ours that need to hear it. Now make sure that you start doing this today. All right, y'all, bring it on in. Listen up to Uncle Sean here, okay? Because I'm going to give you some real secret sauce starting right now. Now I want to teach you how I got from $30 to $1,200 per artwork. And it starts with this, y'all. I want you to implement the 10% rule. What is that? Real simple. Every single time that you get a new client, and if you're just starting out or if you haven't started out yet, get your feet wet, get your first like two or three clients, and then start to implement this. But every single client, just start asking 10% more. So what does that look like? It looks like this. If you start now with $50, add 10%, that's $5 more. Now it's $55. After a little bit, now it's $100. Now it's 10%, $110. You're gonna charge $300? Okay, cool. Now add 10% onto that. Most importantly, this will build your confidence because you're slowly and incrementally increasing your pricing. And listen, y'all, if you do this over time, it's not a big jump, it's not a big scary boogeyman, and you can do it too, along with this. Now, once you become a little bit more seasoned at this, or if you currently are, listen up, this is a great strategy for y'all. I want you to implement the 25% rule, okay? So now, this is when you are already getting yourself some pretty good money. This typically happens around the point where people start to charge nah, somewhere in the area of like 100 to $500. You're in a good pocket to do this, okay? And I want you to decide on what is your rock bottom pricing for something. So somebody approaches you and says, hey, I want this big, awesome illustration. I want you to decide, okay, what would I like to get? And then I want you to add 25% more onto that. So let's look at this in action here. Let's say hypothetically that you wanna get $300 for that new client, right? Okay, so now I want you to add 25% onto that. So now I want you to just message that person back and ask for $375. And then naturally, I want you to just get up and run away because you're gonna be scared as crap because that's gonna be a big, crazy number. And you're gonna be like, oh my God, I didn't really mean that. And I know every anxiety that's gonna come up. But listen, y'all, I have implemented this for years. I've decided on a price, I add 25% on, and then I get up and I run away from my phone because I'm afraid of what the answer is. But listen, Here's the beauty part. A lot of times that person comes back and they say, okay. And that's great for you, isn't it? And now what did you do? Now you've again leveled up yourself. Y'all, I remember the first time I ever got a thousand dollars for an artwork, I almost didn't ask for it. I asked, I had this number in my brain where I was like, okay, you know, I can go for $800. And then I was like, no, Sean, I gotta add more. So I added 25% on, I made it a solid thousand. And then I got up and I just ran away and I had all these anxieties. I was like, you're so stupid. Why did you do that? Like, this is not smart. Why would you ever think about doing that, Sean? And you know what they said back? Okay, that seems fair. I was like, whoa, woohoo! That's amazing. Like, you can do that too. And I want that to be your moment that you have because that is gonna be a blockbuster event for you. Like, it's gonna be crazy awesome. Don't you want that?
Now, if you're growing or you're trying to start your art business, I'm just gonna go on a limb and say that you have a greater purpose in mind. And when you're doing that, friend, I really want you to have that at the forefront of your mind as you're gonna be putting yourself out there and you're gonna be implementing better pricing strategies, okay? Because here is the thing I want you to ask yourself. How will you benefit from you having better pricing strategies? How will you benefit from what you're building with your artwork? Because here's the thing, if you have an inspired future, if you have a really awesome, amazing goal, y'all. So basically, y'all, I need you to have a really deep-seated why. What does that look like for you? Do you wanna get out of your current economic status? Do you wanna make a more meaningful life? Do you wanna be able to support your family? Y'all, the best reason I ever heard from somebody that wanted to increase their pricing was they literally told me they want to start a family. And I was like, that's amazing. Like, why don't we all have amazing, awesome goals like this? I had that goal too. I still do. I need to support my family. I want to inspire my children to go out and achieve their dreams, the things that they want to do and not be fearful like most people are. And if you're like me, you're probably in that same boat too. And the same thing goes, y'all, when you're going to be building your skills. Because yeah, just to be honest, if you don't have the skills to back up the pricing, that you want, and I'm not saying you gotta be the best ever, but you gotta start somewhere, y'all. If you don't have some of those skills, you're not gonna command the pricing. But as you're building your skills, y'all, again, why? What does that mean for you? How does that impact your future? And I just made a whole video about it. You can go watch it, it's linked right here down below. But make sure that you have a really rock solid reason as to what is pushing you forward, what's gonna get you through those bad days, what's gonna get you through those clients, which is gonna help you build that future that you want and deserve. Don't you want that? Another really insane marketing strategy that I never hear anybody talk about, but I've been doing it for years, is this strategy called the anchoring effect. Have you ever heard about this one? Because here's how it works. Basically, what you want to do is when you're going to be throwing out your prices, you want to start with what the highest version is. So what does this look like? Here we go. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, Sean, you know, I want to have this awesome character with all this cool gear doing this cool thing with this amazing illustrated background. I'm gonna throw out my highest possible price point to them. There's tier one. And then they might come back to me and say, oh, I don't know, man, that's kind of out of my budget. And instead of giving up, y'all, throw out the next version. Okay, cool. Well, how about we just do that character and we're gonna do a more minimal background or a semi background and now it'll be tier two pricing. And they might go, well, you know, thanks, but I think that that's still a little bit outside my price point. Don't give up now. Now go down to tier three. Okay, look, what if I do that character with no background? And it's gonna be this pricing. And they're gonna be like, well, that's a little bit better, but it's still out of my price range. Don't give up again. Now go down to, okay, look, how about if I do a half body character and it's this price point. And then from there, how about if we do a bus? Y'all, if you do this, generally what's gonna happen is they're gonna pick somewhere between what your minimum pricing is and what your mid-level pricing is. Because here's the thing, y'all. If you just throw out one number and they say no, you can't just give up and just close that DM or just delete that email because you're upset. Instead, give them something to anchor to that they are going to actually buy into rather than just tossing out your pricing sheet rather than just tossing out your minimum pricing for it or some type of a weird price range because they're generally going to want to stick to the bottom. Why? Because it's real simple. Perception equals value and value equals sales. If you can master this flow, then you can get more money and more guaranteed clients and more closings because I guarantee it because I've been teaching it and I've been doing it for years and it can work for you too. Y'all, I really want to help you by the end of this video to get really big clients and to learn how to at least set yourself on the trajectory to do so. So I actually talk to people that spend this amount of money. Check it out and what I learned right here. The most major takeaway I got from this conversation was that big art clients, clients that pay a lot of money, they look for terms of service and contracts from clients. Having that available to potential buyers, to potential clients, makes you appear very professional because what it does is it gives the client a really good perspective as far as what it's going to be like working with you. And what they also told me that was very insightful was that a lot of artists, a lot of especially newer artists, tend to look very unprofessional by not having that in place especially not having it in place at all. So if you have some type of aversion to having either a contract or terms of service, I'm definitely gonna be pushing that out. Next week, I'm gonna be making a specific video on terms of service. And if you would like to see a video on contracts, definitely let me know down below. So our next topic, 
was really cool to learn that I feel like a lot of us are on the right track. I learned where do big paying art clients look for artists. What they told me was really unsurprising. And just to be honest, if you follow my content, it's right in line with that, by the way. There's two main platforms that this particular client looks for artists and they are DeviantArt and ArtStation. So these are the two biggest art platforms right now. If you don't have one or you don't have either, then I'm gonna very highly encourage you to get both of them and make sure that you have especially organized all of your artwork into similar folders of similar artwork so that it's easy for a client who say wants to commission you for landscape architecture or a client that wants to commission you for mech design can very easily look at all of the examples that you have done before. These are really awesome tips that I learned and also kind of my personal philosophies for how you should tailor your profile so that it looks really professional. Now this also begs the question, y'all, what do they look for? So the topic of style came up a lot in my conversation with my whale. So let me give you some suggestions on certain styles to emulate and derive some type of similarities from. Now everything I'm about to say, these are from pre-established brands, so they come at a high value because they're things that a lot of people like. So what I'm specifically talking about are brands such as Legend of the Cryptids, Magic the Gathering, World of Warcraft, Riot Games, Lizard Art. So what I got from this was that if you can overall incorporate some of those skills and some of those aesthetics into your own artwork, not just copy my friends, don't copy, but if you can build some of those particular characteristics into your artwork, you can start to initially attract some higher paying clients as well. Now this also begs the question then, why wouldn't this client and other large paying art clients just go ahead and hire actual professional artists who are in those fields working at those companies. Well, the answer I got very simply is that all the professionals for the most part are largely unavailable. That's because they're intensely focused on working on their large projects and their personal projects and therefore they don't usually have time to work with individual clients and take personal commissions. Now, that's a really awesome opportunity for us, y'all, and please listen in on this because this is great to hear. What this whale just told me was that there's a huge opportunity for us as artists who are not already working in those fields to go ahead and scoop up all those awesome opportunities because those professionals are unavailable for it. Therefore, that means that yes, anybody like you and I are able to get large paying art commissions as long as it somewhat fits the bill and it's evocative of the type of style that they like. Now, the most important piece of information that this client told me was that you should subscribe to my channel. So definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Give me a like if you're enjoying this video and you're learning from it and make sure that you turn on notifications so that you know every single time I push out content like this. Now this then also begs the question, which is how do you get noticed by these clients, right? So the way that you would get found by one of these clients is to make sure that you are optimized to be searchable. So my suggestion in actually implementing this is pretty simple. Whether or not you're using ArtStation or DeviantArt or Instagram or any other platform to get found by potential clients, what you wanna do is make sure you use relevant and appropriate hashtags, tags, and keywords to make sure that clients can find you and make sure that they, by the way, don't just slam in a whole bunch of keywords and crap that you don't actually do, okay? But make sure that it's tailored and it suits your style. For example, if you're doing anime, if you're doing World of Warcraft, if you're doing Final Fantasy XIV commissions, if you do Marvel or comic art, make sure that you're using those tags, hashtags, and keywords so that those clients can find your artwork. This is a huge major tip to help you get found faster. So now, what exactly do whales look for? I had a really in-depth conversation with my whale about what exactly do they look for in high paying artwork worth $1,500 and more. And these are kind of the elements that I derive from this conversation. First and foremost, really dynamic posing. You being able to create a strong sense of energy, a strong line of action in your scenes, in your characters is gonna be really, really important. Also, one of the areas that this client said that they specifically honed in on is faces. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because faces are just an initial focal point in any artwork with characters. So creating more realistic faces, more lifelike faces, also interesting styles. You don't have to be directly in any of the exact 
kind of styles that I've been speaking about so far, but if you have a distinctive style that makes you more marketable, it makes you more unique, and it makes your value appear greater than some other artists as well. And lastly, the most important piece to have in any of your artworks that's going to attract big clients is a sense of a narrative. So that means that you are telling a story. You're not just having characters that are stiff, standing still. You want to have characters that are interacting with each other, interacting with their environments. These are key essential components of really high value artwork. And if you go ahead and you look at splash art from things like WoW or anything from Blizzard or Riot Games. So these are really high value skills that you're going to see evident in those types of artworks as well. Now, in a larger sense, if you don't already have these skills, here are some things that I would very much recommend that you start to develop. So to give you some overall future goals and some expansion potential in your art life, here are some things that I learned that a lot of high paying clients tend to look for. First and foremost would be realism and semi-realism skills. So regardless of what type of style you are currently working in, realism is the basis of anything and stylization is really just an interpretation of that. One of the things I really wanna make sure that I'm communicating very clearly to y'all is to not copy styles, but instead use elements that are derivative of it. What I mean specifically by that is to learn how to use certain elements like color theory or how to use characters or how to use proportions or how to stylize faces or how to create armor or how to create clothing and body types. These are key essential elements to learn how to do. Along with that, to create more realism and dynamicism, you might wanna consider learning photo bashing as well. And lastly, brushwork came into our conversation a lot too, so that you have a unique quality about what you paint, what you create, and the way that you create it. So now, a major question that I love to hear answers from is what does this client not like? First off, I got huge validation on this one. Clients of this nature hate commission cheats. Thank you very much. I just want to say that I have been battling against commission sheets for years. And if you've watched my video on it, you'll know everything I'm talking about. If not, link down below in the comments. But yes, this whale specifically told me that they are unprofessional, they are cluttered, they're missing information, and they instantly make you appear amateurish. Also, this next topic came up and it might sound familiar to you as well if you've been following my content for a while. This whale said that you need to qualify your clients through a conversation, not just, hey, open for commissions, two slots open, fill it now, fill out this Google form, and I'll give you an email sometime back. None of that. Instead, invite them to have a DM conversation, to have an actual conversation, you know, like human beings do like this. And from that, what it does is it really builds a whole lot of trust and it gives them a really good sense of confidence because the number one thing that I've always preached, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know this, but you need to inspire confidence in your client. That's how you get clients to buy from you, to keep buying from you, to come back to you all the time. That's how you get them hooked on you as an artist and on your artwork. So if you're avoiding having an actual conversation before committing to a project and your client committing to you for a project, then this is where you need to start. And if you want to learn how to do that, I'm going to go ahead and link my video up above and down below here at this point for you to learn how to talk to our clients. And finally, this topic also came up a lot in my conversation with this whale. The topic of payment came up a lot. And my one major takeaway on the topic of payment is simply that you need to use PayPal. Um, and when you're using PayPal, do not ask anybody to send you money as a friend or family. So basically what that does is it prevents you as an artist from PayPal taking a cut of it because it looks like you're just giving money, like you're giving cash to somebody else. So instead, make sure that you send it to somebody like they are a business. What that does is it protects everybody too. So for example, it makes it harder for the client to just ask for the money back from PayPal because that is a huge scam for a lot of people. And one of the things that prevents this from happening is from you as an artist having any type of data trail as far as what you have or have not sent them. What it does is it creates proof that yes, you have sent it to them so that if there is a PayPal dispute, no, hey, I have been working on this and I did provide them with it. So they're a big fat liar. But overall, my friends, these are some best practices for payments. So you might be kind of wondering like, well, Sean, is my artwork worth that much? Can I actually charge that much? So let me tell you the most profitable art niches that you can get into. There's no shortage of MMORPG games. I'm talking World of Warcraft, Black Desert, Genshin Impact, Final Fantasy 14. Y'all, there is a huge market for people that want to have custom characters made. 
So what you need to know in order to get into this is definitely you have to have a very high comfort level, generally speaking here at least, with fantasy style artwork. So if you're somebody that's good with specific type of armor sets or costuming, and especially with different classes and races, this is really great for you too. Now this is pretty well open to mostly anime and semi-realism as far as I know. Here are my best tips for you. Number one is definitely start to draw characters in non-neutral poses. Start to draw them in dynamic poses. They're casting magic, they're fighting, they're slashing. Those kinds of things really appeal to people because that's literally what they experience in games. Along with that too, if you can do multiple character commissions, that's gonna set you up really well. And then also if you can do backgrounds, boom, that's awesome. When you can put that custom MMORPG character into a recognizable environment, boom, it'll blow their mind and it'll definitely set your artwork apart. So these are my best tips for you to get into this scene in order to have your portfolio stand out. This one's gonna come as a surprise, at least it did for me, but I have been seeing this one for literally years. And with the ever-growing library of Pokemon games, y'all, people want to have Pokemon trainers. They have their own original OC Pokemon trainers, and they would love to have them made by you. And these are generally real geared towards people that either do an anime or a painterly style because that generally feeds into what the general aesthetic of the game is right there. Now, this is something that you want to get into, friend. Let me just give you this piece of advice. Know some Pokemon. You don't need to know all Pokemon, but know some Pokemon. Be familiar generally with the systems of it and that's going to generally allow you to work best with your clients on that. In order to make your portfolio stand out, you can have a pretty good range of stuff, but generally, this is one of the ones that's going to work well with just neutral poses. People want to see just what does their character look like, what does their OC look like, or an existing character look like, maybe with a different outfit, something like that. Also, if you can do them battling and or their Pokemon with them battling, that's going to show off really, really nicely too. And then again, if you can add in to your current portfolio a location, someplace that is in-game that somebody in that field would recognize, boom, you are going to stand out really, really well. This one is near and dear to my heart, friend, but Dungeons and Dragons and general fantasy characters. So this is when you're going to be doing adventurers and they're going to be going on quests and they're going to be having moments. Now, if this is something that you're thinking about getting into, here's what you need to like in order to really excel with this. Number one is that you have to be very familiar with different races, both human and non-human. I'm talking orcs, I'm talking elves, but I'm also talking like dragons, I'm talking animals. So you need to be familiar with creating not just humanoids, but non-humanoids as well. You being able to know and be able to replicate specific armor sets, specific weapons, and specific accessories is really going to help you excel too, because that is something that somebody is in a Dungeon Dragons or Fantasy Universe is going to demand. As far as the genres that work out really well in here, it's pretty much open to everything, all right? Anything from realism to anime to painterly to unique styles. Now I'm gonna give you some best practices here because as somebody that does a lot of Dungeons and Dragons fantasy artwork, okay? Here's what I noticed. First off, y'all, you gotta know how to do dynamic lighting. You have to be able to do a lighting source that's not boom, straight from the center, okay? When you can implement dynamic light sources that are not just skylight, then you can do some really amazing things. Along with that too, if you can do multiple character illustrations and you can show dynamic interactions and you can show battles and you can show calm moments or tavern moments, this is really gonna set you apart big time. And along with that too, full-blown illustrations. Y'all get super good at magic effects too. This is a real game changer and it's something that's definitely gonna set you apart and make clients want to flock to you. Since people can mostly self-publish a lot nowadays, you're gonna find a lot of book cover and light novel illustration work for you too. And this can range by the way. So if you can get into this scene, you can really do a lot. Real quick caveat though, make sure that it is always going to be your work and that you're not undersold for it because there's a big danger in that. There's a lot of really cheap authors out there. But if you do get into it, here's what you should definitely be prepared for. In this, what's gonna really do well for you is generally I know is people are wanting either a realism, semi-realism or anime style. Those tend to be the big ones out there. And if you wanna get into this, here's what you can expect to do. You can be expecting to do overall scenes. You can be expecting to do characters and or multiple characters. And basically you're gonna be doing a lot of movies mood work too, because you're setting the stage, you're enticing somebody to want to go ahead and read that book, to read that novel, to read that ebook. And that's going to be the first thing that they notice. So you have to be able to market it in such a way that it's going to convey the main character or the purpose of the story. So what do you need to know and like in order to get into this? First off, anatomy, because nine times out of 10, an author is going to need somebody to do a character. Along with that too, though, the big purpose is visual storytelling. Can you tell a story through your artwork? Have you started to learn that? Are you starting to apply that? If not, I would definitely get into that. You're going to need to know how to make expressions on faces so that it is not just neutral pose and it's also not pretty girl emptiness pose. It's 
really boring. Now, in order to make your portfolio stand up best, here are some of my best tips for you to include. Get better at mood lighting. Get better at using non-native colors on your illustrations on your characters so that it can tell a story. It can make you feel a certain way. It can make you feel surprised or horrified. And along with that too, get used to magic and special effects too, because that is also going to make you stand out big time. It's going to attract a large crowd to you in order to make your portfolio stand out. These are my best tips for this genre. Now, if you've been going at this alone for quite a while and you're still not getting there and you're not sure what to do, then you might need a little bit of help. So I want to offer that to you through the form of my art mentorship. This is a one-on-one -on -one personalized experience. It's not a class. It's not a course. If you're somebody that likes to make specific scenes, locales, landscapes, and locations, environment art is going to be great for you, my friend. So there's a big, heavy demand for environment art. And honestly, this tends to fetch a bigger price tag for you than just general concept art for characters too. People seeking to get into the scene generally do really well with either a painterly or semi-realism slash realism style as well. Here's what you need to know you need to like. You need to like the landscape fundamentals. You need to know how to create a vast array of entirely different types of landscapes. If you're totally unused to this, by the way, I made two tutorials that'll teach you how to draw literally anything and I'll link them down below to help you out if you're really interested in this. You also really need to know how to do texture as well too. And it's also gonna be, to that effect, a really, really good skill Step for you to have would be photo bashing because that is definitely going to expedite the whole process. Now, in order to make your environment portfolio stand out, here's what I recommend for you is first off, you need a large variety of a lot of different type of environments. So everything from modern ones, I'm talking like maybe urban landscapes and things like that, all the way up to high fantasy. You want some castles, you want some really cool exotic locations in there, far future sci-fi. Show me some things in outer space. Show me some terrain on another planet show some cityscapes, but basically you want to have a good diversity in your portfolio of what do you like to do. And if you can narrow in on one of those two, either modern, high fantasy, or future sci-fi, then that's also going to raise your overall price tag, your perceived value, and therefore your clientele as well. So try that out. From games like Destiny, Cyberpunk 2077, if you've watched Cyberpunk Edge Runners, if you've maybe played Halo or Mass Effect, y'all, the sci-fi and cyberpunk universes are always in demand and they're pretty much always on trend, especially nowadays. Here I'm talking big, chunky, uh, militaristic armor. I'm talking futuristic fashion. We're talking cybernetic components. We're talking modified people. We're talking about things that are not currently here, but will be here in the future. Okay, so if you really want to get into this, here's what you need to like. You need to love technology, like all components of it, because it's really going to help you out. And if you're going to be doing more casual characters too, really get into the habit of looking at avant-garde clothing. I'm talking like Paris clothing, like fashion show kind of stuff. That's going to really inspire you to create really cool, different looking future designs. You should definitely make sure your portfolio contains a large variety of different armored type of characters. Everything from very lightly, casually armored into huge, chunky, like could have a missile bounce off of them or take no damage type of armor you know what i mean and along with that too different degrees of cybernetics you can have different humans that have been or animals too for that fact you can have them differently modify levels from just a little bit maybe a couple into like almost all the way cybernetics always works really well too along with that be very familiar with sci-fi design for guns and weapons and clothing too and then finally, one thing that's really going to set you apart is if you can do those types of characters and do those types of illustrations with an illustrated background, which I generally recommend is going to be kind of a cityscape and or a dystopian urban landscape that's going to help you really get set apart from the rest. Now, this one is going to be definitely the most despised. It's going to be the least sought after. And therefore, it's good for you because that means that there's a huge void for you. But any type of mech is really, really, really in demand all the time. And there's always something coming out, be it a video game like Destiny or Mass Effect or a big Hollywood blockbuster film that's going to have a huge clunky robot in it. And especially like with the Gundam series, every single like few years, we get a new Gundam series, right? This is going to produce a huge new slew of clients that want to have have awesome mech designs and there's not a lot of people that like to do this so therefore that means that there is a big market for that and people will pay for it too now if this is something that you want to get into 
Generally, you can go ahead and knock this out in either an anime style, a realism style, and you can also get into it as well. If you're into the 3D component, man, people will love the snot out of that too. And if you like this, things you need to know, you need to know how to do mechanics, how to do armor, how to do different guns and different ammunitions, and you need to basically be able to design something that can realistically move and not just look good. That's a big flaw I see in a lot of mech designs is that it looks good, but there's no conceivable way that it could actually move and operate the way it's intended to. So you need to be a little bit familiar with engineering and how to actually put machinery together. So you can definitely study up some like construction equipment and stuff that's generally gonna bring you to the best possible result if you're learning and wanting to get into this. For my overall best tips in this genre, here's what I recommend. Number one is that you need to have basically a pretty extensive array of different robots, everything that could be in the modern age, all the way up to like nowhere near our current era where things are just so flipping, like starting to look humanoid, like kind of like Neon Genesis Evangelion-esque. Also what works really great with this one, you gotta know this, you gotta know how to do special effects, special effects, lighting, explosions, gunfire, make it not look cheesy, you know? If you can put these into a background, that is a even better situation too, because if you can go ahead and put that mech battling another mech and there's explosions and gunfire and all kinds of crazy hell happening there and you could put them into like an urban landscape or you could put them into a cityscape or you could put them into like desert warfare kind of thing so be familiar with how to do that be familiar with how to do textures be familiar with not only how to make the robot look pretty in its pristine form but also when it's like battle damaged and scarred and burnt and also to help you with that no photo bashing because that is also going to set you apart big time Next is Dark Fantasy. So definitely since the advent of games like Elden Ring or Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and plenty more out there, there's a lot of people with a lot of really amazing, great ideas. So if you're a really big fan of any of the IPs I just went over, then this is definitely gonna be a great place for you. And also what's gonna need to happen a lot is you to do a lot of heavy, heavy texture work. You need to enjoy not doing just clean, pristine characters. No, people are gonna need to be like beaten up and scarred and charred. Bringing that monstrous component to it is really gonna help you enjoy doing this type of work. As far as styles that really excel into this, I see a whole lot of anime, realism, painterly, photo bash, 3D work as well. It just basically, this is pretty open to a lot of different styles. So it can be definitely great for you, my friend. You gotta need to know how to do different armors, all right? Especially if it's like an Elden Ring character, you're gonna need to know how to do specific dark fantasy armor. And you need to be able to understand through the form language there, how do you make dark fantasy armor look very different from high fantasy armor? Because they're not the same, y'all. I would also very much recommend that you know how to photo bash in order to really accelerate this, bring textual aspects to it and bring some mood to it. Along with that too, special effects and mood lighting. Huge for this because people are gonna want those big moody scenes and those characters that just look hulking and brooding and dangerous. And that's how you're gonna set yourself apart. So let me read your mind. You're probably thinking, but Sean, where do these clients exist? Where do I find these magical whales that are actually gonna pay this much? Well, I'm gonna tell you all about it right here. Go check it out.